tonight. Evacuations and states of emergency are underway in some Saskatchewan northern communities as wildfires continue to spread. Also, families and officials gathered at the Saskatchewan Legislature to mark Red Dress Day and to open an art exhibit honoring those who've died or are still missing. Plus, Saskatchewan and the rest of the Commonwealth get ready for the coronation of King Charles. This is CBC Saskatchewan News. It is Friday, May 5th, and the CBC Saskatchewan News starts right now. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Fires continue to burn out of control in northern Saskatchewan. More people have been forced to leave their homes behind. Their worries and exhaustion continues to grow. Sam Sampson has the latest. With a bit of help and a long drive, these families are safe, but their homes could be another story. While I was listening to the radio station, like the community radio, I was literally shedding tears while I was packing my babies. Molly Herman and others in Laloche hope this is as close as wildfires get to their homes. Shortly after she snapped these photos, Molly packed up her three kids, all younger than three years old, and left. She hasn't slept since. Literally, I tried to sleep on the bus, but I couldn't make any efforts. Because one will sleep, one will wake up. It's like, you had you had three, two, one, it's, you're a busy mom. Three busloads of people from Laloche and everything they could pack are now in Regina. So what did you bring with you? Nothing, just the way I am. I wish I could have grabbed my clothes and stuff, but what choice do I have? If the, the RCMP is standing there, they tell us to leave right away. The fires around Laloche and Clearwater River Denny Nation are the biggest in the province right now. Both communities told everyone to leave, a combined population of 3,500 people. Other out-of-control fires are causing concern too. The one near Soto First Nation forced evacuations Thursday night, and Musiman First Nation is on standby. The concern is that it is dry, it is hot, and then the wind is shifting. There's no rain in the forecast, unfortunately. It's taking staff and volunteer crews from North Battleford, Prince Albert, and First Nations to fight fires in the area, and they could use a hand. Heat and as well as exhaustion has, is setting in, and if there's volunteers that out there that are willing to come out and help, uh, we certainly welcome that now. The province says every fire in Saskatchewan was caused by humans, and all are under investigation. With hot, dry weather not backing off, officials want everyone to follow fire bans. Evacuees from the fire zones are spread out across Saskatchewan. Many left on their own. Others needed a ride. Now that they're here, there isn't much to do but wait. Sam Sampson, CBC News, Regina. Over in Alberta, more than 13,000 people have been forced from their homes with the approach of wildfires. 7,000 residents were told to leave a community west of Edmonton last night. They're being directed to a centre in Edmonton. Across the province, though, there are more than 70 fires, 19 of them out of control earlier today. Fires in more remote parts of the province have seen people taken to safety by boat, barge and helicopter. Family members of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls gathered at the Saskatchewan Legislature today to observe Red Dress Day and the opening of an art exhibit to honour their loved ones. Red Dress Day is officially known as the National Day of Awareness for missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls and two-spirit people. The art exhibit is featured in the Cumberland Gallery this month. It was created by Saskatchewan artist Cheryl Ring and is called Heart Spirits. It contains 200 handmade clay hearts, each in honour of an Indigenous person who was murdered or remains missing. FSIN Vice Chief Ali Baer says many First Nations women live in fear daily thinking that this could happen to us, that could be us, and, and it's not going to be taken seriously. And we need to be taking this more seriously. And that's why we have days like today, but that's why it needs to be not just only today, but, you know, every day where we come together, we support our families that are going through this hardships and trauma and things that we can't even fathom. 
The artist says the goal of the project was to release the names of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls from the confines of an acronym, that they are all people of all ages with a history, family and story. And stories were shared today too. One Regina mother shared how she lost her daughter in 2021 and a warning, the story has upsetting details. I um, lost my daughter, Brooke, uh, in November 2021. Um, and since then, um, I've been attending these events, uh, trying to spread awareness. I believe my daughter was murdered, and I believe she and our family is a victim of systemic racism, and she wasn't given a fair investigation. And... I've done everything I can to try to bring justice to my daughter. And I still have no answers this far to, as of today. So I've been wanting to spread awareness about how our women are even overlooked from the justice system, from our local authorities, and how these investigations aren't handled properly and and they're victims of, of um, being blamed for their hardships and the lifestyles they live and some of the bad decisions they've made. And I believe that's what happened to my daughter. On November 8th, 2021, me and my husband, Kyle, found my daughter broke dead in her home she was undressed from the waist down. She had bruises all over her body and she was hidden in her spare room under two bikes. We haven't heard for her, from her for four days. So we went to check on her. We seen her vehicle was out there and I knew the landlord. So we went and called the landlord to come let us in. And that is when we found my daughter. And I know that I shared my story on my Facebook, and I know that I'm not the only person that has gone through this. Um, so many of my friends and uh, people that I know on my Facebook have said that they know someone or a family member or something where the police failed them and they have no answers to this day and it's been years since their loved one has passed. I just want people to challenge these injustices. If you went through that, you have the right to request freedom of information from the police reports, from any other authorities that were involved. And I think we need to start doing this and we need to come together and try to bring justice for our people because if we don't spread awareness and see, let people know what's going on, then this is gonna continue to happen to our people and, and our, our children and all our women. And I would never wish this pain on anyone. A support line is available for those affected by missing and murdered Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirit people. For emotional immediate assistance, people can call 24-7. That number is 1-844-413-6649. Illicit drugs are often laced with deadly substances like fentanyl. Now, harm reduction sites have a new tool to test for fentanyl in drugs. The provincial government paid for Fourier Transform Infrared Spectrometers. The device can identify what is in a drug and alert users of any contaminants. Prairie Harm Reduction in Saskatoon and the Neoyotina Friendship Centre in Regina each got one. Advocates say the expanded drug testing services will save lives. According to the province, more than 400 people died due to fentanyl and related drugs last year. Everything we're testing comes back with positive for fentanyl at this point. Um, crystal meth is the substance that um, is used the most within the site and 100% of everything we've tested in the last little bit has come back positive. Demong says the new device will help identify trends and contaminants showing up in drugs in the community. Getting the test is free and anonymous. Results take about 10 minutes. After that, it's up to the individual to decide whether to use the drug or not. 
The Saskatchewan government announced plans for a new model for family physician compensation, saying it has heard concerns from family doctors. The new model, known as blended capitation, will be an alternative to the fee-for-service system. That's where payment depends on the total services provided. The government didn't specify when the new system would be operational. Family physicians had been lobbying for the changes. The Saskatchewan Medical Association says it's pleased with the announcement. Similar physician compensation models exist in other provinces, including B.C. and New Brunswick. A company that makes rubber products from recycled tires has shut down its tire processing operations. Surecom Industries has been negotiating its contract renewal with tire management and recycling program operator Tire Stewardship of Saskatchewan. But negotiations have fallen through. Surecom Industries says that a year ago they had 137 employees. They're now 75 due to layoffs. Surecom says their contract with the tire stewardship fell through partly because they had tried to secure a tipping increase due to inflation. He offered us a 30% decrease and said, and it was a shocking move. It made no sense to us. And it felt like a bullying tactic, but it also felt a bit like extortion because of our significant investment. We're committed to having two processors in the province because it will reduce the overall cost to TSS which allows us to keep our fees low and not raise our environmental levies and will also reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. And we're excited by, by some of the opportunities that are available um, in terms of new technology that we think we can bring on board. In a letter to the government of Saskatchewan, it said the tire stewardship's recent decisions should be investigated. The province tells CBC News it's encouraged to see a new U.S. tire processing company invest in the province. A special art project is on display at Regina's George Bothwell Public Library in partnership with the Ranch Irlo Society. The society works with people of all abilities in developmental stages. They came together to create a community mural project at the library. The art styles included pointillism, drip art, and some involving black lights. The participants chose the themes, which included mythical creatures, wolves, and a giant phoenix. Organizers say it's collaborative and a great way to socialize and work as a team. We, we sketch out an idea, so we picked a phoenix for the one in here at the Creation Cube. Um, I get the participants to outline it with Sharpies, and then we mark where the colors should be. So you kind of have a theme, and uh, basically we outline, say, yellow here, blue here, and then people can fill that color with dots, lines, squiggles, anything to make a texture. And so by the end, we usually do another outline, and I'll add maybe a little spray paint at the end just to give it uh, some highlights, but it, we usually come up with a really cool project. Ritter says it's a great way for non-artists to get involved, and that many people at the library have joined in, including managers, kids, and seniors. The murals will eventually be put into Ranch Airlo properties around the city. You can check out the display until the end of May at the Bothwell branch in the Southland Mall. It was a pre-coronation ceremony fit for a king. Hundreds of people of all ages came to the provincial legislature today to take part in the pomp and circumstance. There was a 21-gun salute, a brass band, dignitaries, and a flyover. The actual coronation of King Charles starts at 2 a.m. local time, bright and early tomorrow morning. You can watch all the action right here on CBC Television, on CBC Gem, and CBC News Explore. We'll be back after the break. This weather update is brought to you by Capital GMC Buick Cadillac. Super Sierra and SUV sale is on now. Welcome back. Our weather specialist, Ethan Williams, joins me now. And I think this weekend we could use a break from the heat a little bit, both for people who don't like the heat and all the wildfire situation. Yeah, and I think uh, the temperatures are going to come down. We already saw a bit uh, of temperature reduction this afternoon, uh, Sam, in some parts of the province. But yesterday especially was a hot one in northern Saskatchewan. And uh, Stony Rapids, not only did you hit 30 degrees, but you broke your old record by a whole stretch. And that's a record that goes back to 19. 
1987. Uh, Uranium City, Collins Bay, also getting well into the mid-20s yesterday, breaking your record by about a degree or two. But I want to pick on Stony Rapids just for a little bit longer here because this is pretty incredible. Uh, You've hit 30 degrees. Last year on May 4th, you were at 4 degrees. And th- this is the earliest day in, uh, in the year that we've seen a 30 degree temperature in Stony Rapids since at least 2010. That's at least as far back as the uh, public records go. We do know that uh, the May temperature record in Stony Rapids, uh, the highest temperature in May recorded is 33.1 in 2003. So you got a few degrees shy of that. Last time you had a 30 degree day was back in August of last year. And really throughout all the north, very, very warm temperatures deviating much from normal. 20 degrees above normal in Stony Rapids and almost that in Uranium City yesterday and through uh, the Churchill region and much of the far north looking at 10 to 15 degrees. Wildfires, forest fires also causing air quality issues. Lalosh, Buffalo Narrows down to almost Meadow Lake. Uh, we're looking at a level 7 out of 10 on the air quality health index. Uh, these uh, next couple of days here and visibility likely going to be reduced as well. And it is still warm, especially in the north. Uh, Uranium City was our hot spot today at just over 26 degrees. South and central, we have pulled back a little bit uh, in kind of the 15 to 20 degree range today. And I think that's where we'll be sitting for the weekend. But things not going to change much because of our uh, upper atmosphere pattern. You can see the big jet stream arcing its way, this huge broad ridge. And if it looks kind of familiar maybe like the uh, Greek letter Omega. Uh, That is because there is actually a name for this jet stream pattern, an Omega blocking ridge. This pattern uh, sets itself up and basically everything just gets trapped under here. Nothing can move. And that's why Northern Saskatchewan is kind of seeing the same conditions that it's been seeing over this past while. And you can see that ridge really doesn't change all that much over the next few days. In fact, it narrows a bit, but Northern Saskatchewan is still going to be seeing those very similar conditions. We also have a stagnant area of high pressure off the coast of Hudson Bay, which is keeping the north clear. Southern Saskatchewan, there is a possibility that we could see some showers late Saturday and through the day Sunday, especially in southwestern sections. This model is pretty optimistic uh, that we could get a good two to five millimeters. It's not a whole lot, but maybe some moisture. But again, northern Saskatchewan staying clear for the weekend. The south clouding over a little bit. And winds, unfortunately, not going to help as they'll pick up both Saturday and Sunday. Could be in the 50 to 60 kilometer an hour range. Now, uh, for Regina, I think we'll be maybe a little bit too far north for uh, the rain over the weekend. But cloudy nonetheless and temperatures pulling back. Next week, a chance of some showers as we get back into the 20s. And Saskatoon, a dry weekend for you. I think you're just a little too far north of where the moisture is. But again, there is the possibility that we could see that. And temperatures back into the 20s. So air conditioning back in use next week again, Sam. A little break this weekend. Thanks, Mm -hmm. Ethan. You bet. Dozens of light installations are on display in the northern Italian town of Brixen. The artists were encouraged to share their thoughts on two themes, peace and the environment. Some of the artworks are for viewing, others allow visitors to immerse themselves in the exhibits. Stay with us, we'll be back after the break. The World Health Organization is declaring an end to COVID-19 as a global emergency. But the head of the UN Health Agency warns that it doesn't mean the pandemic itself is over. The worst thing any country could do now is to use this news as a reason to let down its guard, to dismantle the systems it has built, or to send the message to its people that COVID-19 is nothing to worry about. It had been put in place in the early days of the pandemic before any effective vaccine was developed. At its peak in January 2021, the pandemic killed more than 100,000 people every week. The latest World Health Organization data for the week of April 24th shows that rate has slowed to 3,500 deaths. Over the last three years, the disease has killed more than 6.9 million people across the world. It's a ceremony that dates back centuries, but one that hasn't been held in decades. Tomorrow, Charles III will be crowned king, the first coronation of a British monarch in 70 years. With a look today at what's been dubbed Coronation Eve, Briar Stewart reports. 
In the final hours, King Charles greeted some of the many in the waiting crowd. Oh. You before in Canada twice. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You're looking very patriotic. This is the moment Bernadette Christie from Grand Prairie, Alberta, met the king. I told him I saw him in Kelowna and Edmonton, which is kind of funny because he was with Diana then, but I didn't talk. I kept that to myself. She's no stranger to camping out to catch royal events. This is her seventh trip to London and her third night sleeping along the procession route. Just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Perfect place to pitch the tent. Others felt the same when they got a chance to greet Will and Kate. I'm, I'm sure looking forward to it as well. So. Pray, bit of sunshine stays out, keep you all dry. In the sun, part of the procession route looked a little like a big British backyard party. But tents were up and the rain did come. Even that, though, couldn't dampen the spirit. He's going to make a perfect king. Simple reason is he's been brought up by the royal family, hasn't he? No one was around when he was born. These horses will be pulling the royal coaches in the processions. But in South London, there's another team and a different set of passengers. Now this is not a royal ride, but it is a replica of the more than 250-year-old Golden State coach which will be used in the procession. This one came from the set of the television series Bridgerton, but it's being used as part of the pre-coronation excitement. Queen Elizabeth described the real gold coach as being horribly uncomfortable, but the folks on board this one loved the experience. Yeah. Was that the fun? Did you like it? You sang horsey horsey, didn't you? Um. <laughs> Was it bumpy? The bumpy? Yeah. No? <laughs> but of course, not everyone is thrilled by the spectacle. Back at Buckingham Palace, a few in the crowd came out to spread a different message. We partly wanted to come down today so people wouldn't get the wrong impression by seeing people camped out and think, oh, everyone in Britain supports us. No, we don't. Thousands of police officers will be deployed across the city as dignitaries arrive from all over the world, some of whom got a chance to meet the king at a private reception ahead of the historic coronation service tomorrow. Briar Stewart, CBC News, London. Now among those dignitaries, Justin Trudeau is on his way to the coronation. He boarded a plane in Ottawa. The Canadian delegation at tomorrow's ceremony in London will include Indigenous leaders and a youth contingent. And 45 members of the Canadian Armed Forces will be part of a military parade following the coronation. And Ethan's back with one last look at your weather. Good weather to stay inside and watch the coronation. Yes, that's right. Of course, it'll be dark once it starts, but by the time it's all over... You'll have a nice sunny morning in Regina to go outside and enjoy. Close to 10 degrees, breezy east winds at that point. Clouds starting to build in a little bit, and it'll get cloudier as we head throughout the day. Likely tomorrow will be around 17 or so. Saskatoon also starting on a sunny note. Also starting on a bit of a breezy note, you'll hit double digits by 8 o'clock. And then same temperature and uh, I think a little bit sunnier for you in Saskatoon as we head throughout tomorrow. Now, lots of geese out there, of course, but... Not very often that they perch themselves in trees. Patty tells me that she thinks this one may be a little bit confused, Sam. Kind of hard to have a nest up there. That is poised for attack. Yeah. That is what that is. I'm step out of the way. <laughs> Thanks, Ethan. You bet. And that is it for us this week. For news anytime, you can always head to our website or subscribe to the CBC Saskatchewan YouTube channel. Ethan will be back with more local news at 11. We leave you now with a sure sign of spring. The Pelicans have returned to the Weir in Saskatoon. Thanks so much for watching and have a great weekend.